everyone, my name is Joel Dunay, and this is my official, unofficial network state exam solution. Now it's the 25th topic, which is about virtual local area networks, VLANs, purposes and goals of VLAN advantages and disadvantages. So I come up with my famous example that imagine a network where there are 100 computers and devices with on the same network and of course i'm not going to tell it again they will slow the network performance not that secure and etc i've told uh, about this example not in the i believe not in the previous but in the 23rd topic as well so please check there so of course the goal or, or advantage the big advantage and the big goal of the virtual local area network that it's it's uh, not based uh, i mean here anybody can connect it to this virtual local area network regardless of their geographical position because this is a logical grouping that uh, simply means uh, that this technology does not require plus physical cables or uh, new devices or something else because this is just a simple logical uh, stuff therefore it is really good because it can be as i said used because it does not require anything else so it's just simply compatible and we have to use our existing existing or existing resources so the purpose and goals of vlans of course is almost the same like subnetting a network because we are going to segment up subnetting the network, segmenting the network. So we are going to segment with local area networks with small VLANs, these 100 N devices, to smaller virtual local area networks. This simply means that, of course, everyone knows if we are having multiple devices, imagine this, this, then this, 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 we can say that this still will belong to one network, this still will belong to the other, and this still will belong to the other, because these virtual networks will, will work like an independent uh, subnet, so if uh, something will be sent on this network, then it will not be received by this network, so it will act as a network. That's the advantage of VLANs that here we don't have to do almost nothing we just have to implement the vlans so i believe that's all i don't know whether it has disadvantages so i i only mentioned advantages frame tagging and types of vlans so, okay first of, I, I spoken in the previous videos about collision uh, collision domain and broadcast domain so i'm going to try to visualize it in a more nicer way and we don't need this we just need to two hosts we will need three switches nope we will need three switches and what's going to happen these switches are connected and the hosts are the hosts are connected to these switches And uh, I'm going to visualize it like these two, these two are in the same VLAN and these two as well in the same VLAN. So what's going to happen, it's quite simple that, of course, why we are talking about VLANs, I forgot to say it or mention, we are talking about VLANs and uh, switches and DTP because we are not involving routers to send traffic and this is done with the help of switches and DTP so default how does it look like this switch will not able to speak with this switch because even though they are in the same local area network they are connected to two different switches so what's going to happen, we have to make, let's denote this with blue, these ones 
as a trunk links because trunk links ensures that that they will deliver or transmit all the VLAN traffic. That means if uh, let's say that uh, this is the VLAN 10 and this is the VLAN 20, so this this trunk link will ensure that it will forward the VLAN 10 and VLAN 20 traffic as well. So with the help of DTP and trunk links, we can send traffic from one VLAN to another VLAN even though the devices are connected to a different switches. So what's going to happen, I'm going to rewrite here them. So we are here at 10 and these are 20. So what's going to happen we have we all know that uh, if we talk about talking about layer 2 of course we have uh, we have a network uh, header transport header data trailer and the start of the frame so network header transport header data trailer for error detection and start of the frame so how does it look like because by default the switches are using frames in order to communicate with each other because they don't have routing tables like the layer 2 routers and these frames don't know how they are connected with uh, these uh, VLANs so how they will know that which frame belongs to which VLANs and it is quite simple that a VLAN frame, I mean a VLAN tag will be inserted into the frame. I don't know how by long the, the tag that will be inserted. I know that it contains the, like four fields, the new stuff, the new VLAN stuff that is inserted into the frame. But I know its last one is the VLAN tag, which will simply define that which traffic is belonging which frame is belonging to which VLAN. So this is what tagging means. It is quite simple that if we are sending from this PC, from this PC, then it then when the traffic will be reached here, the switch will add this VLAN, so the TAN, the VLAN TAN tag into the frame. It will be forwarded to this switch. This switch will simply forward it to this switch and at this switch it will check which port is an access port and configured to access VLAN 10 and that's that one so it will send directly to its uh, to the destination and not sending out to the other. So that's basically how they are working and of course this is how the frame tagging works. Okay, frame tagging. Types of VLANs. So we have the, if I remember well, the data VLAN maybe, which is carrying user generated uh, traffic. That's all. We have uh, the default VLAN, and by default, all the switches, all ports are belonging to the default VLAN because, or in order to let them work because when we are connecting a switch to another switch they are able to communicate with each other because all of these ports are belonging to the same default VLAN therefore they can communicate with each other so basically that's why we have this one the default we have the native VLAN which if I remember well the native VLAN is used that if we are if there is a message that does not tag the frame that does not tag then it will be sent out on the native vlan and if we are sending a message that a frame that tagged with the native vlan tag then it will simply drop it and we have the management vlan which is used for management access like ssh these are the types the broadcast and collision domain concerning vlans here you can come up the example that what is the collision domain, what is the broadcast domain, and of course this is the in case of the VLANs because these are the with the purple, for example, that's a collision domain. These 
this whole picture is a broadcast domain and the switches are helping to split off this collision domain. So this is the simplest example for that. The operation and configuration of VLAN, it is quite important that uh, the configuration you, you have to define on the switches that which ports are access ports and you have to define that which VLANs they are accepting. Also know that you have to define or configure all VLANs on all switches so it's not enough to configure the VLAN 10 and 20 on uh, this switch and on the other switch you have to define on all switches them by manually or by, with the help of VTP. So you have to ensure this. Also, you have to configure trunk links in order to send or transmit multiple VLAN traffic, I mean multiple tagged VLAN traffic, and uh, I believe that's all about it. I spoke about the operation. Spanning VLANs across multiple switches, advantages of this scenario, this is the spanning VLAN that it goes through on several switches and we are using trunk links. So I don't know what the advantages of this scenario is of course that we don't have to use routers. So we are sending traffic with, uh, without involving routers. Therefore, we are not using a router CPU and resources for simply sending tagged frames. So that's the advantage of this. The inter VLAN routing, okay, benefits and limitations of different solutions. We have three solutions because look at this example. We are having switches and the inter VLAN routing is involving router and not this many switches. So let's type paint again. And uh, if I remember well, in that case, we are having a switch, maybe another switch and another switch. And let's say here we have, no. The simplest one is just having a switch, two end devices. These end devices are connected to the switch. We're having, we are having a router. I don't know their names. This is the first approach. I can tell them what they are doing. So we are having, a router here. What's going to happen? This host, which is at VLAN, VLAN 20, will send traffic to this host, which is VLAN, which is at VLAN uh, 30. So what's going to happen? We don't have, uh, or it's not a good use case to use trunk links between a host and a switch. Therefore, we cannot send uh, tagged traffic. So in this case, the router will help us in the tagging. Because this message will be sent out here at the switch it will tag with the VLAN 20. It will be sent out to the router on this physical cable. And on the other physical cable, the router does a conversion. We will have a frame that goes to VLAN 30 and that will be received by the other device. So with the help of router, because that does this conversion, we can, with the help of two physical cables, that's the key importance that we are using two physical cables, simply can forward traffic from one host to another host. This is the most simplest solution. Okay, and I will just simply erase some stuff. Because the second solution, which is, if I remember well, is called the router on a stick, is when we are having a single cable, and this cable is called as a trunk, trunk link, therefore, we will do exactly the same, we'll send up a VLAN 20 traffic and we'll send that back a VLAN 30 to the other host, but in this case, we are using a single cable. This is called as a router on a stick approach. And of course, the advantage of this is that we are not having multiple physical cables. We are just having a single one, which is a trunk link. And we have the last approach, which is the best solution, I believe, or I would say the best solution, where we are not, oh my God, where we are not, oh, why did I? Okay, I, fucked up. 
So when we are having two hosts are connected to a multi-layer switches, because a multi-layer switch, as I said in a previous video, can do layer three functionalities, so for example, routing. So in this case, simply, it will do the traffic forwarding. So this is the best or the simplest solution, because here we does not require any plus physical cables and we don't have actual router. This is the most simplest because we're just using a multi-layer switch. It does the conversion so we can send traffic from host one to host two. And basically that's all about uh, the inter VLAN routing and uh, that's all about this topic. Again, if I say something wrong, then I don't really care. And uh, the, don't forget to subscribe.